My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Megan, go ahead and introduce yourself. Let us know where you're coming in from. My name is Megan Gallagher. I'm a 24-year-old two-time TED Talk speaker. I am a New York Times bestselling author. I am a TV host and writer for After Buzz TV, as well as a mental health advocate and a podcast host. And currently, I am in San Francisco, California. Awesome. So you're down the block from us. That's awesome. How are you guys holding up with COVID-19? Everything cool? You know, it's good. I feel very grateful that luckily me and my family were all safe and healthy and we all have the means to just, you know, we're lucky. We get we have the privilege of working from home. It's a blessing. So, we're all just staying optimistic and we're just, you know, we're all we're just keeping each other just in a good headspace. I love it because the schools are closed. Now the parents are forced to teach good stuff to their kids. And now maybe they spend a little bit more time. It's okay. I mean, delay everything for a year. What would happen? Nothing. Everything's cool. But anyway, let's talk about this, Megan, because I think you're going to cause a problem with me and my wife because we always fight about this. Mm -hmm. She thinks we have discussions. I think we're having fights because she's pro-education, hardcore, went to Pepperdine. She's an attorney, all of this stuff. I went to normal public high school, went to UC Riverside. I did all that. I dropped out to do business. So... We always come from this where she went to all private school, all this, you know, Ivy League, all that. And I went to normal stuff, had a 4.3 GPA, AP classes, all that. So she's more like private. Let's give the best education to our daughter. And I'm not like, what about normal? I mean, the kids are going to do what they're going to do. So we got it. So let's talk about education. And mm -hmm. why do you think our system is broken? Look. This is my opinion. I believe that our school system is broken because schools, typical schools, they're not preparing teenagers. They're not preparing children, teenagers for real life. That's why so many teenagers become 25 years old and they flip out. They have a midlife crisis. They move home. They don't know what they want to do because Schools are teaching kids, hey, let's talk about the Cold War. Let's talk about the bubonic plague that happened 300 years ago. I'm sorry, but that's not helping anyone. That's not, that's not productive. We are not preparing teenagers for their life. We're preparing them for what we think they should know about the past. We're not preparing them for the future. So, okay. So why can't we just go fire the, the superintendent and the dean? Why can't we just fire them? What, what's stopping us? Like, who's in charge of fixing it? Do you think you and I will be able to fix it? I think it's um, a ripple in a small pond. I think the little changes build up, build up. And I personally, I've dedicated my whole entire life to changing the school system. I've made it my mission. I plan on making movies. I plan on doing a tour. I plan on doing everything. I think it's going to be small changes, but I, I do believe that there are little changes happening. But school the school system has been around for decades, and teachers don't want to change. They don't want to change the curriculum, yet there are students that are killing themselves, that are hooked on drugs, that are literally like flunking out of school, and no one wants to talk about it. People just... Oh, no, just get better grades and you'll be fine. Um, no, I mean, we're not, once again, we're not preparing teenagers. They're human beings. We're not preparing them for how to trust your gut feelings, how to know if you're happy. How can I tell if I have depression or anxiety? Real life stuff of we're always evolving. People may turn 70 years old and think, oh, my gosh, you know what? I want to change jobs. And that is okay. That's amazing. But we are telling teenagers, specifically middle school, high school, you get to pick one major. And when you pick that, you cannot change. It's just, it's so messed up and it's not real life. It's not real. <laughs> I mean, to me, the way I look at it is none of the things, the, the daily activities that I do in my business or just in the past 20 years, just past 20 years, any of these activities that I've done, Beside basic English, basic math, basic science, just basic common sense that I could have learned on a YouTube video. Yeah. None of the stuff that I was taught in school are serving me today. 
pure hundred yeah. percent garbage. Yeah. None of those stuff that I, now now mind you this mind you this I'm Persian so typically we are forced to go either become an attorney or a doctor like my dad's got two PhDs my wife is an attorney my sister is PhD MD so we have a lot of PhDs and MDs I mean we we'll, we'll throw these credentials like they're nothing but they take 10, 15 years to acquire right so and and mind you this I took calculus BC in tenth grade. In for three years, I had no math because my math was that strong. Yeah, literally none of those stupid equations that I learned how to solve that was three, four, five pages long so in my AP calculus class are serving me today because we got something called Samsung iPhone. I could just Google any equation, will give me the response time, and that's it. And I'm not an engineer to learn those things. I'm not putting a man on the moon to calculate the trajectories. I'm not doing that. So. Yeah. I spend four or five years and probably good hundreds, if not thousands of hours in a study group with my buddies that I could have been doing something for fun or get other experiences that would have been good. Just, I could have gone on more dates. I could have just gone had more fun with girls. Like literally you that's been You could have lived life. You could have lived your life. That's what you could have done. You see what I'm saying? So to me, it's like, that is the crap that pisses me off. Why that that is the case? I feel the exact same way. It. I have spoken in the last four and a half years. I've spoken almost five years. I've spoken at over 500 middle schools and high schools. And I have spoken to teenagers one-on-one. -on -one, and they all say the same exact thing. I don't know what I want to do with my life. And my parents expect me at 14 years old, 14. And people expect them to know, you need to know what you want to do, what kind of college, where you want to go. And then for the rest of your life, you need to know that. Meanwhile, and half the kids I went to high school with personally growing up, half the kids I went to high school with, am I allowed to swear on here? No. <laughs> Half the sorry, half the kids I went to high school with aren't doing shit, and they aren't. But it's because they were. I was raised in a community where you oh, but getting a good GPA, and then meanwhile the kids get to college and they flunk out because they're 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 partying too much because there's no balance because they start getting hooked on drugs because they never once you know try. It's just they never once tried something in high school. And it's so true because they don't, they don't, I mean, there's just, there's no balance. There's no real life scenario. So half the kids I went to high school with aren't doing jack crap. They aren't doing jack shit because um, no one raised them where follow your passions, do what makes you happy. Just people said, oh, get into this college because it looks good, because you're more likely to get hired by this company if it says you went to Harvard because you went to Stanford. Um, great. Well, half the time they're at Stanford, they're getting wasted and they aren't, they're flunking out and they're getting C's and D's. Meanwhile, people like me, I didn't go to college. I started my own business at 19 years old and I worked my butt off. I spoke at YMCA's boys and girls clubs. I did everything for free. I drove around for 500 hours every single day, passing out business cards. I did not go to college. I did not waste my parents' money drinking, partying, just not giving a crap and thinking this is the, this is life. I have it all. I busted my ass I busted my ass driving around to schools trying to help change teenagers' life and talk about real life stuff, anxiety, depression, body image issues, how to deal if you're a people pleaser, how to tell people how you feel, how to manifest your dreams, like what you talk about, all of this think and grow rich, all of this mindset, it's real. And that's why I wanna teach teenagers it's all a mindset. It's all a perspective. If you believe you can do something, it took me two years, two years to get a TEDx talk, two years. I never once gave up. I sent in six applications every single dang day. I sent in six, even on weekends, and I never once gave up. And I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not sorry. <laughs> there are people in colleges who are just 
you know, living at home, and they're like, oh, yeah, I guess I'm happy. They don't have that inner drive because they're not, because they were not raised to put their passion and their happiness first before how much money I make, before what are my parents going to be proud to tell their other parents. It's just the truth. No, definitely, I agree with that. Listen, you brought up a good point, thinking Goris, Napoleon Hill said that over a hundred years ago in his book, that if this book was given to people in schools, it could cut down in the amount of schooling they need in half mm -hmm. or potentially more. All of these books that I paid for, I mean, listen, the only reason I know about Amazon is, is because when I went to university, I bought all my books through that, paid it with the credit cards, did all that stuff. That's the only reason I know Amazon. But nobody came and said, you know what, Vahid? You spent $1,000 on these books, you know, right? on, the, on the academic side. Well, why don't you just buy this? This yeah. Thinking Go Rich book, this is law success. But Thinking Go Rich book on Amazon. I have a question too. Why Why aren't those the new textbooks? Why don't they give those to teenagers in high school when they're first starting their freshman year of high school? How See, the school system doesn't want teenagers they're not they don't want teenagers to succeed actually they're not setting up teenagers for success because if they were they would be giving out books like that you want do you want to teach someone how to fish so they can f get get it themselves and know how to like fulfill provide for themselves or do you want to just give someone fish you want to teach someone how to fish and how to get it themselves Schools need to be giving books like that, Think and Grow Rich, because that will- But Megan, think about it, Megan. This was the only time, first time in my life when I read the book, Think and Grow Rich. Now it's been like 12, 14 years ago, but it was the first time that anybody on the planet yeah. asked yeah. me, point blank, go sit down, write down your goals. What do you want? And I was yeah. like, what do I want? So I'm like 25, 26, first time in my life, now, everybody else said, what do you want in life? What kind of car you want? I'm not talking about that. Like, what do you seriously want out of life? Because you get one, you're going to die one day. And what do you want? Exactly. Let's think about it seriously. And I'm all like, so I want car, I want house, I want this, I want wife, I want kids, I want this, blah, blah, blah. All of these normal stuff that I think everybody else would want. But what do I truly inner side, what do I want? And yeah. I, I actually had a hard time. So in the class, in, in the session that we were, I actually had a hard time. I yeah. was having difficulty writing down what the heck do I want? Well, like, what do I really want? It got me to start thinking that, yes. holy shit, I don't have it figured out. And as a matter of fact, I'm at zero. Like, yes. I haven't even moved up because I really don't know what I want because what I want, everybody else wants, and that doesn't just make sense to me, you know? Yeah. So. If, if they give this, it will be crazy because half of the universities, you know, will be, let me, let me, Megan, let me tell you this. There's something called CLEP exams, C-L-E-P. You'll be surprised how many people on this planet, on this, in the United States, I can show you in the past 12 years that don't know what CLEP is. Let me tell you what CLEP is. CLEP examination is for people that don't want to go inside the class, sit there, typically for people that work during the day and they can't go to school, you literally go take whatever you want, whatever school you want to go. You want to go to UCLA. You find out on their website for your major, what CLEP examinations would they accept and you can get units without showing up. All you have to do is get the book for history 101, history, whatever it is, economics, whatever, math. You get the book, 20 bucks, use on eBay, you show up to the center, you pay 60, 70 bucks, you take the exam. If you pass, they'll give you the units. So you can literally don't show up to community college, skip two, three years of just sitting there or wasting mommy, daddy's money, and then you get those units, you submit it to universities for your biology, let's say major, they could take in up to like 50 or 70 units from CLEP exams. Mm -hmm. And here's the crazy part. If you don't pass, you get to take this shit again next week again. You take it as many times as you pass, they'll give you the unit. So I just saved myself a whole entire quarter of sitting there in the class, driving gas energy effort, and I could just take a clip exam for it. Mm -hmm. You literally can go online, get an MBA with four or $5,000 with some work. 
But here's the part. None of my stupid counselors ever told me that. Because if they would have done it, I had the summertime. I could have sit there, just cramp it up, get all those units. So when I go to university, I could take the units that they don't offer a CLEP examination for it. And I could actually live my life and go find out, go do internship and find my stupid passion so I could do more of that instead of doing stupid things. Because guess what? If, if the school system, I just realized this while you were talking, the school system, if they were to give books like Think and Grow Rich and what you just said, where they said, figure it out yourself, you know the answers deep down. First of all, schools would go out of business. They would lose all their money. That's why they don't do it. They want teenagers and kids to feed into the system because without that, there is no school. There is no order. There is no authority figure of I'm your teacher. I tell you what to do because schools don't want to help students by teaching them things like think and grow rich where it's I'm going to share with you how to manifest your dream life so you can take it and go follow your dreams. No, they want to keep teenagers locked in a box, stuck where, oh, I, I have to, my teacher knows what's best for me because they're older, because they've worked here for 10 years, because they, it's, it's so, it's, it's bullshit. It's literally bullshit. So that's everyone, why. Everyone has the power to manifest exactly what they want. And that is why I want to change the school system so teenagers know that they have the power within them and they don't need anyone else. Like, yes, you may need people to make connections, all of that. That's fine. But you, you don't need a teacher to sit and tell you this is no, because what happens when you turn 35 and you realize you've been living at your parents' house for 10 years and you have depression and you're, you know, like a hundred pounds overweight and you're like, but I got all A's in high school. No one gives a shit. No one, no one cares because you're unhappy because you gave your power away to your teacher in hopes that they would help you. It's just, it's a fact. Schools are not setting. But Megan, even for networking, even for networking, listen, you want to network with people you think USC business school is good? I got a solution for you. We'll do the Persian style on this, okay? Yeah. Literally, you call me. I'm going to let you borrow $100, $200, whatever the coffee, how much it is, right? Whatever yeah. it is, four or five bucks, the Starbucks. You and I will literally go to USC. I will find out which class you want, which professors you want. I literally show up and I say, listen, my mom and dad didn't have the money. I messed up in high school. I didn't do good on my SAT scores. I, I messed up. But here, I'm here to network. Can I talk to you for five, ten minutes? I just saved my parents quarter million dollars through that. And the fact that you were honest, you were truthful, you were authentic. Do you know how many friends and homies I can find for you in USC by you saying that? Literally. So even if you wanted to network with yeah. the elite of the elite, you just show up to USC, lunchtime, start networking with people. You get to know them. That you yeah. text, you follow them on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, everywhere. And then guess what? When they have a party, they're going to invite you. When you yeah. have a party, invite them. Yeah. The next thing you know, in about a 12-month period, you will know the entire stupid class. Yeah. You are one of them without actually showing up to school. Yep. So I don't understand. Even that if, it, I mean, I told you my wife is going to get on my case. Hopefully she doesn't watch this, uh, this episode. I'm going to tell my team to hide it, bury it, so she doesn't. But even if it was for networking, I can show, you can go online, watch five videos on how to network with influential people and then just go do it. You don't need to show up to the school to do that. And that's the crazy part. Statistically, I don't have the exact number, but last time I checked, which was a, like a year ago, 49% of billionaires didn't even finish college. Like astronomical, like 60, 70% of millionaires no, didn't even cold, finish yeah. high school. And I'm like, so... It's a mistake, it's a perception, it's a bullshit story we yep. created for ourselves. We repeated ourselves that education yep. equals money. Yep. Education, academic, has nothing to do with money. Now, if you use it to make money, great. But if you want to do the correlation between, you will find out that that research is going to be so shocking. That's why they don't do it, right? Because oh. that is not the case. 60, 70, almost 100,000 people go to UCLA all the time. 
They yeah. get six to seventy thousand application. I'm like, yeah. so if all of these guys are making hundreds of thousand dollars. Why do we have a broken country? Why do we have a financially broken country if these guys are educated on? Yeah, it's because. Anyway, it, I'm it, sorry. It, you were supposed it, to talk. I kind of, I, I took it. I got passion. I'm sorry. No, this is good. These kinds of conversations need to happen. By the way, because this is how change happens when. We realize, okay, so the school system does not set up children, teenagers for success. It keeps them in this cycle of constantly assuming and thinking, oh, I need to go to school to do this because I was brainwashed to believe this. I get that you need to go to school to become a surgeon. I get that. I get that to be the medicine doctor. Nothing wrong with I that. I get that. Nothing wrong with that. I get that, but for everything else, you don't like it's just it's just it doesn't exist. It's a brainwash, it's a scam, it's a fake thing where see if schools and this is why I'm so passionate because I remember vividly sitting in my classes in high school and I always I had these kinds of thoughts all the time and I was like, Am I the only one thinking this way? Because I don't, I'm not, I'm not buying into this. I got straight D's. I got a two, I got it straight D's, F's all in high school. I got a 2.0 GPA. And now I'm making like six figures because I am preaching the real stuff because I always knew growing up, I was like, this isn't real. And I'm not putting in any effort because I don't care because I don't see the point in getting a straight A on a test about the bubonic plague or the cold war or um, I don't even know what that plague I don't even know what that is and I don't want to know the the Titanic I'm sorry that happened 200 years ago I don't care I want I to talk about if if it has to do with me helping my daughter have a better life I'm interested in knowing if it's yeah. not I don't see how it's going to come into the equation yeah. like it's not going to let anybody it's not going to let me to discover something new that's going to help humanity yeah. Megan Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time and being here. Uh, we are not done on this topic. We are definitely not done on this topic. Mm -mm. As a matter of fact, uh, I, I, I got the Instagram handle education for these purposes. So yeah. you and I are going to be definitely talking. We had a little episode with, with Instagram. So um, we got hacked on that, but we got it. You know, we're, we're doing a lot of good stuff for that. So you and I are going to talk. And I we're going to get together. I imagine the world in which we're one day my grandchildren, their first book in school, second or third grade, after they're able to read, will be lost success thinking go rich, right. learning about successful people on this planet first before we ask them to decide how successful they want to be. So they have role models and examples to follow instead of teaching them garbage about who killed who 150 years ago, which is not going to help anybody on this planet. So no. I envision that. Hopefully it can come true sooner, but I also know that these kind of movements take time. So I'm up, and, and meanwhile, this is not all I do. Meanwhile, I got to live my life, but I will do my best to contribute to this movement yeah. as much as humanly possible. Yeah, it's, you know, it's something I'm going to dedicate the rest of my life to because I am so passionate about it. And the high school I went to was absolute trash. It was just trash in the way that they, every teacher, there were a few good teachers I had, but almost every, no one cared. No one really cared about- Megan, how could they care when they got 4,000 students, Megan? How can they care? There's no way humanly possible for me to care for the entire class of high school graduates. There's like six, 700 of them in just every class every year. There is no way humanly possible for me to know every single person's name and, and in 12 months they're going to be gone. It's humanly impossible. That care must be given. The attention must be given based on what you need. They need to go do the basic research on what they want, what's their passion, do more internship, then coming to me and say, listen, I want to be the King Kong of social media. Well, I come to my class. So now I got 30 students and I'm focusing, teaching them everything. I can't teach 300 people and get all of them successful. That just, I don't have the bandwidth to do that. I can't text and communicate, give you that personalized attention you need to 300 students. Like who does that? 
Why should you do that? Why are you putting that pressure on teachers where they're never given the resources? Teachers are the lowest, most brokest people on the planet. You don't become a teacher because of the money. You become a teacher because you have a good heart. That's it. Purely because you have a good heart. But shouldn't teachers be paid more than doctors? Yeah. Because they're the first line of defense. Yeah. They're the ones that are shaping up. Most teachers are chickens. Most teachers will never take a risk. Most teachers are not business people. Most teachers are not entrepreneurs. 95% of teachers have never even read a self-development book ever in their lives. Mm-mm. And they're supposed to be teaching our kids. So we shouldn't put responsibility on people that are not equipped. It's like you and I, them sending us to the military saying, listen, go defend the country. Listen, Mm -hmm. we're losing the war. We're losing the fight. Like, that ain't going to happen. We were not trained. We don't have the equipment. We don't have the tools. We don't have that. Just the same way if they give me a knife, I'm probably going to hurt somebody. But if they give a doctor a knife, that person is going to heal somebody. So you got to equip them first. Like, the, the coal mining uh, whole entire industry. You know, somebody, this white guy, the really simplest guy from in the middle of nowhere, somewhere on the other side of the Mississippi River, said the most amazing thing on YouTube. He said, listen, if you guys are going to take our jobs and go solar, go do this, go do that, can you guys train us for new jobs first and then take our jobs so we could feed our families? Like, to me, that was like the, it was like, that, that's like a three and a half hour conversation that this guy just shortened up in one sentence. He's like, I don't mind. You think it's not good for pollution? No problem. But can you train us first for new jobs and then take our jobs away? Like, how can, can it get even simpler than that? So we're not, we need to be training our first line of defense people that are shaping our, our future minds first before we blame them. Yeah. Megan, thank you so much for taking this time and being with us. Uh, thank you so much. I think much. we should do one live session every day just to talk about this. Hopefully, yeah. there will be a principal and teacher that wants you to do the talking. I'll do the driving. I'll come drive you there. You do the talking, right? You're much yeah. better speaker than I am. So I, I'll do the driving so you don't get tired. You do the driving. But uh, if you're ever in L.A., we have a full studio, video equipment, everything fully 100% set. So whenever you're in L.A., you let do? us know. Oh, my gosh. Can you? Can you DM me the info? Definitely. Thank you. We got we got that whole thing on a lockdown. So we'll do more talk, more conversation, more talk. Thank you so much. Thank I you. appreciate it. Listen, I may not be able to support you 100% in everything that you do, but don't ever let any of these stupid guys tell you to stop. You, oh, no, you trust me. I was, I was raised. Oh, I was raised. I'm the most, like, I, I am the most confident, outspoken person. I have the thickest skin. I say whatever I want, and I know I'm. I know I'm right. So, you're the best, Megan. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye, bye.